kill a pawn. Took your queen, now I'm coming for your king. Say your prayers. Push your knight if you're dead. Look, you scared. Like that crow. Took your rook. Killing you slow. Make a move, it's your go. No pressure, except for what I'm applying. Are you even trying? Mathematically, you're out the equation. All your pieces are mine for the taking. Up, uh, your bishop didn't make it. I'm sorry, y'all. Your bishop didn't make it. How tragic. I just got you in check. You only got two moves left. Make them count. What the what was that all about? That's weird. Why would you even move there? Ouch. Now it's painfully clear. That was a good game right there. Thank you. I'm sitting on a boat with the past, and his mind is a twisted wet cast. He's going to have me relive it again. I might as well tell it to a friend. Was I always strange? No. I was normal like you. Who would have known? But these fights broke out. It was a war. Cannons of emotions hitting for my floor. Down I sat with Dr. Lemon Fitter Reed, and he told me exactly what I need. Here, little girl, take these pills. They'll keep you from living. Just sit still. Every other doctor said the same thing. Who was I to argue? What was I to bring? Down, 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 down my throat. Soon, I was wearing a different coat. I at least made a new friend along the way. Let me introduce drugs and the devil. Hooray. The devil started all these parties. Can't you see? He was there within me. Don't you believe? They didn't understand. They put me away. Terrible decision, because I still remember today. The hospital was my second home. Tubes up each hole, how I felt alone. Drink this charcoal, there's a good girl. No sympathies or smiles, now watch me as I hurl. Finally, I knew I had enough. To the loony bin, now you're not so tough. I'm not crazy. Look at me. I'm just scared. I'm only 12, I wasn't prepared. Fuck you. That's what I said on the phone. The big green room, I'm locked, hear my moans. You can cry each night, but what will that do? Adrian cut his veins, he would have cut his throat too. I saw that blood, and here we're all bleeding. We're just faking our smiles to get out, go on proceeding. Once I was out, the damage just begun, because you slept with her, and she wasn't my mom. I stayed up all night, knowing it was my fault. She's leaving, divorce is what it's called. I drove them apart with my ax, now to family I want, and one I clearly lack. Ron had to go and be dead. Bipolar shot him twice in the head. I wonder, is everyone waiting for my turn? These scars and cuts will forever burn. It's been three or four years, so it seems, but I'm still living the same goddamn dream. I lost him and he lost her. Two relationships that drown in a blur. Ten pills is what they hand me each night. I'm still in the loony bin, putting up a fight. I'm trying to tell the world I'm not crazy. I was fine, but now I'm dizzy and lazy. Excuse me, my pills make me stumble and fall. They keep on adding, I wish I wasn't there none at all. No more knives or cuts or doses back to that place, but I'm still a wreck. Can't you see it in my face? But look, on my skin, it's a tattoo, a sign of peace. They think it's trashy or dumb, but if they really knew. But my symbol of what I fought for and the war I lost in blue. So there's peace within myself, but right now I'm not out there. Because there's no land on this boat with past, I've been stuck here. I open my eyes every morning. My spine and legs fight me as I climb out of my dirty love cradle. My dirty love cradle where two of my three favorite activities in life happen daily. And it pains me to crawl away from my favorite place. But I've got to go out and contribute to this rat race. So I brush my hair and put on my game face. I put on my shirt that says, treat me like your doormat. I drink my coffee on my way and tune into morning show radio chat. I sit in my fixed chair and serve myself to the public to devour. Eyes fixed on the same computer screen per eight hours. I give my life away for pennies. I work the work of three, all rolled up into the burrito that is me. I work like three, but my worth of two is for free. 
I'm like a circus clown between my two jobs, my rent, my car, my bills. I juggle. I wake up every morning and I struggle. I sit at that desk and I let people treat me however they want and I am forced to stay muzzled because I have to stress and sweat for every penny to this puzzle. So don't tell me about those who make millions just to throw or hit a ball when I have to watch every step I take to make sure I don't fall because if I do, I will be paying that medical bill until the good Lord calls. I slave hard for this roof and these four walls. This is the, for the masses that bleed like me, that push their palms hard to the earth and pray for a money tree. It won't go with us when we die, but we need it to live right here. Money creates our hopes and money creates our tears. It turns us into monsters and feeds off all of our fears. We beg for it, we die for it, we whore for it, go to war for it, we dance for it, pull down our pants for it, strain for it, drain for it, neglect our loved ones and shame for it, slave for it, shave for it, study night and day for it, shit. We pay for it. So if you're like me and you get depressed when every work Monday comes around, put your hand to your chest and breathe. And don't get stressed, things could be a lot worse even though they aren't the best. And remember, we aren't fools. Like Wu-Tang said, cash rules. It's just the sad truth about life. We'll struggle for the small things. I'll do whatever it takes for my cradle, my roof, my walls, my nourishment, and my family. It's just all part of the price on this life's bill. I get up every morning and I struggle because that's just this life's survival skills. <laughs> Usually, I'm just a dreamer of dreams. An introverted freak who dares not to speak of such terrible and taboo things because I've been scared straight by my traditional Catholic upbringing. You know, fed the bullshit and heard all types of myths like baby Jesus cries every time you happen to stroke your dick. Or that it is the foulest sin to have a hard on from wondering what that young vixen of a nun has hidden underneath the garment. Man, I imagine some black and sultry stockings that end just above the knees attached to a corsage by a thin strip of lace along with the matching panties and a bra that not only lift but separates too. Man, this is what Catholic school does to you. It puts his eyes and temptation into remission until the walls of adolescence come crumbling down by a mere thought led by another and another and another until it has found me sitting next to you. Sitting next to your boyfriend, sitting next to a stranger. That all too familiar club scene of which I bore from so easily. Too much babbling banter, so instead I gathered up my liquid courage to ask her to dance. But one quick glance back at the majority of broads I've asked that quickly made me change my stance. Instead, I just got up and put on my hand. She looked at me and I guess she seen something she ain't ever seen from a man. Cause with a wink, she was up and she was ready for action. I led her up and away towards the second floor. As soon as we hit the door, man, we started to dance like crazy until we ended up in a dark corner. At this point, I didn't care. I had to put it on her, so I said, listen, I've caught quick conversations about you and him, how he won't do this or that, so it's kind of like you got a puppy in training. Well, allow me to explain then the things a grown dog would like to do to you. <clears throat> I could pour champagne and lick it off your mid-range, and you can turn around and show me what that booty do. I could try to touch your brain while I got my tongue so deep inside of you. Shit, you'd get so wet, I might require the use of a scuba suit. I could be in hot pursuit with you on all fours and me on two. Knocking at your core, keeping score, inhibitions we ex explore, traditions we ignore. Cause when I get to ass slapping and hair grabbing, you know you're gonna be loving it and begging for more. When it comes to pleasure, I'm not one to ignore. And I'm sorry that your man turned out to be such a fucking bore, but whenever you got an itch, you need scratch just a bit, you can come quick. Yes, all puns intended, cause you know it feels so splendid when I take the weapon and just put the head in. Cause it gets you all squirming and begging. I put a pillow under your ass so you can come up off the leverage. Then we can laugh when your legs twitch, smoke a bag in preparation for seconds. Sex so good you might even feel me in you even when I'm absent. <laughs> she was giggling and laughing but still took my hand without even asking twice about a man because my first reply was man fuck him. So fast forward, now we back at the pad, she's stroking, I'm rubbing her ass, and before you know, I had this girl's nails dug in my back. Man, we had sex equivalent of crack. We laid out in cum comas, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh -huh.